Sometimes you just need to decide when enough is enough. So this week, I'm going to explain escalation markers, what to look out for when someone wants to provoke a fight. But before that, did you think this guy waited too long to defend himself? Let me know in the comments below. As always, we'll look into the signs of attacks, the triggers and the drivers for violent action. So there's a pattern of behavior here. These are things you need to know if you seriously want to learn how to defend yourself. So keep watching. Violent encounters are often stories. And if you watch them from the start to the finish, you can understand that story and even learn something from it. The guy in the black shirt wants to fight. He's got the classic posture of aggression, chin up, arms down, trying to occupy as much space and getting in the other guy's face. In contrast, the victim isn't giving him the response he needs. He's giving much more of a defiant body language. He's facing away, hands on his hips. He's almost non-confrontational with his approach. And this gives the impression of being disinterested, being defiant. This antagonizes the attacker further, who then tries to escalate the response by headbutting. Angry people need angry people to fight. This is why he steps back in anticipation of a fight. If Blue Shirt had stepped in at that point, he would have walked straight into a punch from the attacker. Instead, Blue Shirt waits despite being emotionally drawn. But what he does is he takes a sideways posture familiar to him to create space and potentially a frame. He puts something in place between him and the attacker, trying to remain defiant, which leads to the next level of contact. I often say that putting your arm up will often lead to an attacker trying to push your arm away or initiate a response such as a punch. In this case, he slaps his victim to further provoke a fight and then backs away again, expecting him to fight back. So there's a pattern of behavior from the guy in black. He provokes and then he steps back to see if the guy in blue will step in and follow up with him. Now the attacker's pattern of behavior is predictable. He steps back into personal space, only to walk into a turning throne and a pin to the ground. Now I'm sure most people watching this would say that the guy in the blue shirt took too long to defend himself, too long to act. But actually, I think he got it right. I have what I'd call a three times is a pattern rule. This is simply explained as, if someone does an action three times, then there's a pattern to it. The first time could be chance. The second time could be coincidence. But the third time is a pattern. So if someone does something in threes, then that gives you an opportunity to act. And this is a classic example of a pattern of behavior that's easy to exploit. Three times is a pattern. So the lesson to be learned, sometimes when people are provoking you, if they get into your space and step out of your space, be wary of because as I said, sometimes people often need to be triggered to fight and nothing triggers you more than another person who wants to fight, another angry person. So what's the takeaway from this? Judo is ideal for taking advantage of forward momentum. It's the perfect skill when people are moving in and out. From a technical perspective, I always think that if you're going to throw, it's far better to throw and remain standing. The last thing you want to do is throw the guy and land on the ground with him. If you land on the ground with him, you have to think about the next stage of the fight, whether you're going to stay there and wait for help. And this of course could be dangerous, especially if the guy has friends or is armed. So one of the advantages of throwing and remaining standing is that you can keep the guy pinned to the ground. If the bad guy is on his side, he can't use his other arm. we will find it very difficult to draw a weapon. So remaining standing is ideal for throwing, especially in self-defense. Because you can look around and you can see what's happening around you in the environment. And most importantly, if you have to, you can run. Remember, a good throw is the finish. So when the body hits the concrete, it hits it hard. And that is the concussive blow that you want. 
So it's always worth adding some clinch and throwing skills into your fight game. Thanks for watching.